Ford once said, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, and working together is success. In these tough economic times, Mr. Ford's words ring very true. We have come together and have begun shaping the new future. America's greatest cities have become great because of their community spirit. They have pulled together and made it through. In the Bible, the book of Exodus tells us that the children of Israel made their journey out of Egypt together. We must stay and continue working together to ensure a bright future for Elwood. Elwood is not the only community in Indiana or America facing numerous challenges. Like our fellow Americans around the country, we have had to tighten our belts and work harder. Although we share many similarities with neighboring communities, Elwood is unique. The people of this city have great character, and they take tremendous pride in their heritage. We are having success with moving Elwood in the right direction. Together, we have reopened the city pool through generous donations from our committed citizens, businesses, and organizations. Fittingly, we named the pool in honor of our very own Olympian, Mary Beth Dunahay. The Mary Beth Dunahay Aquatic Center is not only a first step in restoring our community, but a reminder that Mary Beth's story communicates that hard work and determination do pay off, and that dreams really can come true. The pool also serves as a safe haven for our youth and a facility that provides them with the opportunities that some of us didn't have growing up. With that being said, my primary goal has been and will continue to be restoring a prosperous economy and putting our community back to work. After taking office, the first thing my administration did was put together a comprehensive economic development plan that included six specific goals. Goal number one was to develop strategies and initiatives which will enhance and restore growth in municipal revenues, including municipal property taxes, as well as municipal utility revenues. We will accomplish this by stimulating growth in municipal property tax revenues by preventing and eliminating urban blight and stabilizing neighborhoods, increasing the revenue generating capacities of the existing infrastructure systems, through redevelopment of abandoned industrial sites and brownfields, and reducing the tendency to rely exclusively on utility rate increases as the sole method for increasing utility revenue. Goal number two is to stimulate neighborhood revitalization and to stabilize residential property values. We must reduce the amount of tax delinquency on residential properties by intervening effectively in the property tax lien process and using the powers of the Elwood Redevelopment Commission to reduce the incidence of property tax abuse. Remove tax delinquent properties from the cycle of gaming of the tax delinquent property system by absentee landlords. Place delinquent properties in the hands of citizens which are more likely to pay property taxes and to maintain their property so as to improve <coughs> neighborhood conditions and property values. Enhance property tax revenues from residential properties. And enhance utility revenues by restoring the viability of occupancy and restoring utility connections to existing infrastructure. Goal number three is to stimulate the redevelopment of existing industrial property especially that which is served by existing <coughs> utility infrastructure. 
We are undertaking initiatives with existing industrial landowners to address brownfield issues and to redevelop existing industrial property, which had been abandoned or is otherwise out of service. Looking at the economic redevelopment of existing abandoned or otherwise out of service industrial properties would have a positive physical impact on the community on a number of levels by increasing local employment and personal income, increasing local property tax revenues to the general fund of the city, and increasing city re utility revenue by placing existing infrastructure back into service. Goal number four is to develop infrastructure policies and strategies which will constrain the growth in utility rates over the long term. Through restoring the economic viability of the existing utility systems through effective investment in infrastructure repairs and reconstruction to eliminate extraneous flows. Performing professional studies necessary to identify cost-effective opportunities to eliminate stormwater from the sanitary sewer system and increase compliance with state and federal CSO requirements. Eliminating stormwater intrusion into the sanitary sewer system wherever cost effective. Please understand that eliminating stormwater intrusion into the sanitary system generates multiple positive outcomes. Number one, it reduces the operating costs associated with treatment of stormwater. Number two, it increases the effective treatment capacity of the existing sewage treatment facility by removing the stormwater. Number three, it reduces the number and volume of combined sewer overflow incidents, thereby improving compliance with state-mandated CSO regulations. All of these positive outcomes have the secondary effect of keeping sewer utility rates lower, thereby generating a positive impact on residential, commercial, and industrial sewer utility customers. It is vitally important that all citizens understand the gravity of the problem facing our city utilities and its ratepayers. In meeting the Indiana Department of Environmental Management and the federal EPA standards and guidelines on our combined sewer overflows. We are currently under a state mandate to spend $35 million to eliminate overflows at our water treatment plant. These overflows are caused by the fact that more than 95% of our city sewers are combined meaning that they carry both storm and sanitary waters together. We are extremely optimistic about reducing this cost, and I will keep you updated regularly on our progress to address this issue. Goal number five, to develop incentives and strategies to attract and or capture new investment from existing Elwood and Madison County investments, which adds new jobs stabilizes the workforce, and extends the economic life of existing industries. Elwood and Madison County have been especially hard hit by the shift in automotive and other manufacturing employment in recent decades. And it is my focus to develop policies and strategies which enable Elwood to encourage new investment from existing industries. New investment from existing industries helps to secure jo existing jobs and reduce trends towards unemployment, thereby stabilizing personal incomes. It helps to stabilize and improve local property tax revenues, to promote employment growth over the long term and sustain economic growth. New investment from existing industries helps to secure economic growth by capturing investment in new products and product lines. It also helps to keep the manufacturing facility competitive in the modern economy and reduces obsolescence, thereby extending the economic life and productivity of the existing facility. In order to stimulate new investment from existing industry, TIF dollars may be used as an economic development incentive.
TIF dollars generated through new investment could also be used to assist in the cost of removal of stormwater sources from the sanitary sewer system, thereby reducing that long-term cost of $35 million. Goal number six, to develop incentives and strategies necessary to make Elwood more competitive in attracting and capturing investment by new industries. Despite Elwood's lack of interstate highway access, <clears throat> and also to make Elwood more competitive with other municipalities in Indiana as a great place to do business. As the national economy begins to recover, the city, the Board of Works, and the Elwood Redevelopment Commission must work to identify strategies and incentives that will make Elwood attractive to new industries seeking to grow and or relocate. Economic development incentive packages routinely include the investment of TIF dollars by a community. Therefore, the ability to offer this incentive allows us to be competitive in attracting new industry and or to encourage existing industry expansion, which is critically important to securing new jobs for Elwood. Many challenges for our city still lie ahead. We must continue working hand in hand for the betterment of our community. Psalm 133.1 says, How good and pleasant it is when people live together in unity. Next, the state of our city finances. With the assistance of the clerk treasurer, we have conducted an exhausting review of our city assets and liabilities. And I am pleased to report today that Elwood is on strong financial footing. We have solid reserves, and our projections for the immediate future all appear positive. With the implementation of our economic redevelopment plan that I have outlined, we are poised to face a brighter future. A special accommodation for our clerk treasurer, Allison Atwood, and the insurance committee for taking on the huge task of bidding our city employee health insurance. Through this process, we are in a position to save more than $300,000 in just the next year in health insurance costs, while not reducing, but enhancing the coverage for our city employees. With this savings, we will be able to give city workers a long overdue increase of 3% for the first time in more than eight years. The good book tells us in Psalm 37, 21, the wicked borrows but does not pay back, but the righteous is generous and gives. If you owe debts, you pay debts. Please know that our community is well served by a great group of dedicated people who love Elwood. <clears throat> to all city employees, please accept my sincere thanks for your commitment to our city and especially for stepping up even more this year. <clears throat> Elwood is beginning to turn the corner and although there is hard work left to be done, Elwood's brightest days really do lie ahead of us. We have renewed interest in Elwood as a location for growing and expanding businesses and living and raising a family. It is my expectation that we will have many exciting announcements to make in the coming months and years as we create new opportunities and continue to revitalize this great city. It is the greatest professional privilege of my life to serve you as your mayor. Thank you. May God bless you, and may God bless all.